What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to the SI Sooners podcast. Man, we've had a ton of cool football stories at SI Sooners in the past week, and we're going to try to get to each one of those today here on the podcast, but let's be honest here. It's softball season. It's softball time in Oklahoma. Sorry. Sorry. But you saw it last week. Ryan did the podcast, his half of the podcast, from Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City while the Big 12 tournament was actually going on, right? So, you know, now he's making final preparations for the Norman Regional. Starts tomorrow. Get your popcorn ready or whatever you got. And all I got to say, Ryan, is that stadium better be full. No excuses. You better be there. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think they're going to have much of a problem with that, John. When the initial allotment of tickets went on sale in five minutes, they were all sold out. And now with the announcements that happened on Wednesday, the NCAA lifting their capacity restrictions on the the spring championships, shortly followed by Oklahoma announcing they're going to go to 100%. Uh, tickets are on sale right now as we're recording. I expect by the time we're done with this pod, there will be a tweet out there that says the Norman Regional is sold out. Absolutely. I have no doubt. That's Ryan Chapman. He's in Norman and will be in Norman for the duration of the softball weekend. I'm John Hoover. I'm staying up here in Tulsa at least until like mid-July, right? So that'll work. Thanks for listening to the SI Sooners podcast, and thank you all for watching on my YouTube channel. Sorry we missed an episode a couple weeks ago. Technical snafus. We got sunspots or something. I don't know what's going on. SI Sooners is a Fan Nation affiliate, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. Our website is allsooners.com. Ryan, there's a not a lot of podcasts, let's be honest, not a lot of podcasts out there that are going to lead off with softball. I can just hear the listeners right now. Come on, Hoover, give us the latest on the 2029 recruiting class. Come on, Hoover, give us the, the full menu at Champ U Barbecue in time, in time. Be patient. We'll get to those. The biggest story on campus right now is, is that softball team, and really how for the first time since, what, last March 2020, like 14 months ago, they're going to be playing in front of a full stadium. Packed house. And Ryan, the best part, and I mean the best part, no masks. Both, the both as you mentioned, the NCAA and OU came out yesterday and said 100% stadium capacity and no damn masks. Man, I'm stoked. How excited are you? Yeah, I, I can't wait, John, because – this is why we like got into this business, right? Is because we love sports. We love when you see those athletes go out there in front of packed crowds. Like you, you cannot beat that adrenaline rush when you hear the roar of a stadium, things like that. And Patty Gasso talked about that. Last weekend, the official attendance number for the Big 12 championship game was 3,879. That was a very large crowd at Hall of Fame Stadium. And Coach Gasso, she basically said, you know what? You can also feel that everyone's spread out, that everyone has masks on. You, you can feel there's tons of fans, but there's not that roar of the stadium. You're going to get that in Norman this weekend. You're going to get that in Norman next weekend, should the Sooners navigate this regional. And John, they're going to set some records at the Hall of Fame Stadium for the Women's College World Series if OU and Oklahoma State can make it in front of that newly expanded, uh, beautiful venue they've got up in OKC. Now, Ryan, uh, I got vaccinated, and you better believe that I'm carrying my little vaccination card everywhere I go because uh, that means if I can take the mask off, right, then I'm going to carry that card. I mean, hell, I'll pin it to my shirt right above my SI logo right here. Uh, but, uh, but, Ryan, this is great, man. No masks, no social distancing. It's exciting to be, I'll just say it, back to normal. So now um, – OU does say, of course, there will be some special circumstances. We have no real application for what those are going to be. Talking about 12-year-olds that have been vaccinated might have to wear masks, you know, 12 and younger. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. All I know is I'll have my little mask wadded up in my back pocket if I go out, but it's not going to be on my face. Um, Ryan, somebody's going to be out there uh, in a mask and that's just fine if you want to sit in your mask at the stadium. That's just fine. I don't care. I don't care if you wear your mask. I don't care if you don't. Listen, if you don't wear your mask, don't sneeze all over me. That's all I ask. I, I want to look at this, though, from the big picture perspective. We're, we're talking about full stadiums. What's the big picture? In the fall, right? Football, back to normal. 85,000 at football games. Can't be a spike. Can't be a viral spike between now and then. We don't want this thing to, to rise back up, so... I guess we still have to have some responsibility. It's not a free-for-all. We're not going to frat parties from here on out. Um, 
I mean, I hope, I really, really hope this isn't too soon. I don't think it is. CDC tells us it's good to go. Uh, the NCAA tells us it's good to go. OU tells us it's good to go. So I guess we trust them. And let's get those masks off and let's get those stadiums full. But really, let's get the stadiums full in the fall. That's the real goal for me on this thing. And this baseball, softball situation in the spring, they're going to be kind of the proving ground for whether a full stadium in the fall can happen. Nobody wants your spring sporting events to be a super spreader, right? When it comes to the virus and, you know, you wipe out your summer. I got some travel plans. Uh, Boom, you know, have full stadiums again next fall. That would suck. But, Ryan... We also got official confirmation yesterday of something that we broke two weeks ago here on the SI Sooners podcast, and that is uh, Big 12 Media Days in Dallas, July 14th and 15th. That's right. We broke the dates, and we also broke that the Big 12's intention is to do it in person. Well, yesterday, the Big 12 posted officially, hey, we're going to try to do this in person, and it's going to be July 14th, 15th. Everybody jumped on it like that's the first time anybody's Right, heard of it. Um, if that's the first time you've heard of it, then you don't listen to the SI Sooners podcast enough. Ryan, I, I'm just saying, you know, but uh, but yeah, schools are bringing the head coach and they're bringing two players to media days. Um, let me ask you, OU's in the group that's going to go on July 14th. That's a Wednesday, I believe. I'm going to be getting back from Idaho like the day before, so that'll be fun. But uh, Ryan, um, Quick Big 12 Media Days preview. What questions are you looking forward to asking Lincoln Riley and Spencer Rattler? And who's going to be the guy that represents the defense? Yeah, first off, uh, for me, if I'm just picking based off what we saw last year, I feel like Isaiah Thomas is probably that guy. Um, he's the he's first off who the defense would probably want to put out there. Alex Grinch last year said he deserved a shout for Defensive Player of the Year. Well-spoken, all that stuff. He's not going to you know, put any bulletin board material out there. So I think Isaiah Thomas is the guy. Uh, Going down the list, though, as far as Lincoln Riley goes, John, I'm really interested to try to dive in more to how he's going to handle, how the team is going to handle the expectations that have been laid upon them this season. Because what what was the adage when Bob Stoops was in charge? The years that the Sooners came in with all the expectations are the years that, by Oklahoma standards, they fell flat on their face. It was the years that maybe people were overlooking them a little bit. They didn't have all the hype, all that national championship hype train from day one. Those were the years that the Oklahoma Sooners came in, played their best. I don't know if you can sneak up on someone when you're Oklahoma, but those are the years that they had those breakthroughs. So that's what I kind of want to hear from Lincoln Riley. From Spencer Rattler, I just want to figure out how he's coming along mentally between the years because that was the thing. He's the guy that can make all the throws. We're just going to have to see if he can make the correct decisions when it comes to this fall to keep that offense moving because we saw at times it was explosive as all get out, but it was also would would sputter for a whole quarter, a quarter and a half. So I kind of want to get to the bottom of those two things on the offense. And as far as the defense goes, I I just really want to know how Isaiah Thomas feels these linebackers are coming along because if the linebackers can take that next step forward, I I think this OU defense has a chance to be the elite unit in all the country. I think you're, I think you're spot on with Isaiah. I do think there's a chance that you could see DeLaren Turner yell out there. I also think there's a chance you could see last year's defensive captain, Pat Fields, out there, but I hope it's uh, Isaiah because he is on the defense when it comes to spokesman. He's probably the most wide ranging. Um, has is he's clever. He's engaging. He's funny. He's insightful. He's very well spoken. Uh, he's a guy that can really express his thoughts um, and and still yet offer a little bit of a uh, little little bit of board, bulletin board material. We've we've seen that in the past, like at the at the uh, Cotton Bowl. Um, but I'm with you on on uh, Isaiah. And then offensively, yeah, you're right. The expectations, you're talking about the 2009 season when Sam Bradford went down and Jermaine Gresham went down and Brody Eldridge went down and Trent Williams went down. It's a bunch of, you know, all Americans is all that is, right? Expectations, you can't fulfill those expectations. What about 2011 when they were the consensus number one preseason pick and just absolutely fell flat? You're right. There were times when high expectations on the Oklahoma Sooners and they didn't meet those, didn't come close to meeting those. So this Oklahoma team, let's be honest. This is what Lincoln Riley, this is why you coach at Oklahoma. This is why Lincoln Riley's paid five, six, seven, eight million dollars a year, um, depending on what year it is in his contract. 
this is why you embrace those things. This is why as a recruit you come to Oklahoma because at some point you're going to be ranked number one or number two in the nation going into the season, going into the regular season. Why? Because you want to win a national championship. And the only way you can do that is to be number one, not in the preseason, of course, at the end of the season, but to get to the pre the postseason rank number one, it helps sometimes to be number one in the preseason. You gotta you gotta look the part if you want to play the part. That's just the way it is. Up next on the SI Sooners podcast, Ryan talked to Patty Gasso and Jocelyn Allo yesterday, and he's going to preview the Norman Regional. Plus, probably the most important story I've done so far at SI Sooners. Hey, listen up. Spring is here, but you know the seasons in Oklahoma. Hot one day, cold the next. That's a lot of work for your heating and air unit, but the guys at Trade Pros got you covered. Sign up for one of their no-hassle service plans. They'll come out twice a year and tune up your AC in your furnace, and you get priority scheduling and discounts. Just call Chris at Trade Pros, 405-316-0598. That's 405-316-0598. Or go to tradeprosokc.com. Hey, are you a business owner looking to get your product out there to the masses? Let's say you run a hotel in Norman or a car dealership in Oklahoma City or a restaurant in Edmond. Or maybe you're a small online business who creates and sells OU merchandise and you just want Sooner Nation to come sample your wares. Well, then consider advertising in this space right here on the SI Sooners podcast. SI Sooners reaches thousands of readers, viewers, and listeners literally every day. And the SI Sooners podcast is the ideal place to find your next customer. To advertise, send an email to allsoonerssi at gmail.com or DM us on Twitter at all underscore Sooners. If you're on Twitter, I encourage you to follow SI Sooners. It's all underscore Sooners. Find Ryan at Radio's Ryan, and you can find me at John E. Hoover on Twitter. Our website is allsooners.com. We're a fan nation affiliate, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. As I've said before, 90% of our content is free, so just click and enjoy. But now we also offer premium content. That's where you're going to find some more exclusive reporting, some stuff with a little bit deeper insight, some of our own you know, thoughts and commentary on the topics of the day, some uh, in-depth analysis, I guess. And you know we're going to offer up our opinions as well, because that's kind of the fun part of what we do. Um, Ryan's going to be adding some recruiting content here in the next few weeks. So that should be fun. Check, take a look at that when you get a chance and we'll post everything on Twitter, but when you click on it, you got to have a premium membership to read the whole thing. And here's how you do that. It's easy. Listen, it's $1 for the first month, $1. And you can go monthly after that for $5.99, or you can go yearly for only five bucks a month. Or you can also add the Sports Illustrated Magazine subscription in there for another $10 a year. I mean, what a deal, right? So so just remember, you don't, uh, you don't just get the All Sooners stuff from me and Ryan. You also get, if you sign up at All Sooners, you also get access to premium content across the Fan Nation affiliates, across the entire Sports Illustrated network, including SI's own premium content, which is definitely worth the price. Uh, so check it out. Just sign up at allsooners.com. Ryan, I teased the most important story I've done so far at SI Sooners. But first, let's give the people what they want. Let's preview the softball regional. Starts tomorrow in Norman. OU plays Morgan State. Game time is 7.30 p.m. And no, it's not on television. I mean, what the hell? ESPN3, listen, is a great alternative for games that are not televised. But how the hell do you not televise the number one team in the nation Again, and again, and again, Ryan. Well, if we want to get into the weeds on it, we can kind of, uh, look, this is, the, this is the streaming deal that the Big 12 wanted, so that's what they got. I, I'm not sure that anyone's really clamoring to put Oklahoma and Morgan State on national television either, John. And, and no disrespect, but the Bears coming out of the MEAC um, yesterday, when we talked to Patty Gasso, she quite frankly had said that they – haven't quite gotten to cracking open the bears in the scouting report, which to <laughs> me says they're going to do a little bit of basic scouting uh, today and a little bit of stuff tomorrow morning. And Oklahoma should be able to go out there, play their D game and still run rule uh, the bears of Morgan state. So that would be why the Sooners aren't on national TV there. 
But setting up that game either against Wichita State or Texas A&M, that one should be a fun one. Both of these teams come in with their own different motivations. The Aggies, losers of seven straight, ended up finishing 10th in the SEC. They're better than that. They are. Um, they're just in one of those ruts. And you have to ask yourself, can they wipe that slate clean and get it going for the NCAA tournament? On the other side, Wichita State, this is one of the better two seeds in all the country. And they kind of feel hard done by. They felt like they should have been going to the Stillwater Regional, where they've beaten the Cowgirls two out of three times this season. They feel like they have a better RPI than Mississippi State, the number two team in the OSU, uh, the Stillwater Regional there. So, so they feel like they kind of got the short end of the stick having to come to Norman. This is uh, the team with the second most home runs in the country at 94, trailing only Oklahoma, who has, checks notes, 130. Yeah, that's the gap from <laughs> one to two. But look, uh, it, it, when you have a team that can, that can hit, send the ball out of the park, like Wichita State, all it takes is one even mediocre performance in the circle from Giselle Juarez or Nicole May or um, Shannon Sale, and the Sooners could be behind because Bailey Lang, she's a great pitcher. She's the ace that beat Oklahoma State twice. The Sooners dinged her for six runs on seven hits in four innings in uh, the, their only meeting of the season against Wichita State, but it's one of those things that she's a great pitcher. If she can feel it, if Wichita State can start hitting some homers, things could get interesting. But, uh, John, I got to say... I don't see a way that the Sooners don't get out of this and don't host Washington or, or Michigan there in the Super Regionals. Yeah, Ryan, so I post um, uh, basically all of our content in some Facebook groups. I, I think it's actually all the Facebook groups. And the uh, the comments there are hilarious. The readers on Facebook, when they comment on the posts that I'm you know, posting our stories. And I mean about 70% of the people that are commenting legit think there's a conspiracy to not televise OU softball games. Uh, seriously. And, and and after these last two weeks, you know, the Big 12 and the regionals, when Oklahoma State is on broadcast TV and Oklahoma is not in both cases, I, I mean, I can't explain it other than to maybe just agree there is a conspiracy, right? I mean, it's crazy. I know it's out there on the edge, but uh, why else would you not want the, the number one team in the nation on your TV, on your broadcast signal, Especially with the the passion that the OU fan base, Ryan. I'll be honest. This is the first time that I've actually covered OU softball. I mean, I've been to some games and I've attended the World Series and I've interviewed Patty Gasso a dozen times or so, right, over the years. Not enough before this season. I interviewed her a dozen times just this season or more. But this is the first time I've actually been in you know SI Sooners that I've actually covered the team. I've. I didn't know the the fan base was so passionate. I didn't know they were they were in like they're in. They're every bit as passionate about this team as the football fans are about the football team and it's I didn't realize that. It blows me away. I'm impressed as hell by the dedication of the OU softball fan base and I just don't get how ESPN, Big 12, Big 12 Now, Big 12 Plus, ESPN Plus, whatever the hell it is, I don't get how they don't see that. How they haven't picked up on it. I guess I didn't pick up on it before this year, so maybe we'll cut them some slack. So to, to further preview the, the regional, Ryan, um, I'll ask it this way. You kind of answered it just a few minutes ago, but you know me, right? I mean, it's my nature. It's my reputation to be point up blunt with my questions. Is there a chance in hell that Oklahoma doesn't win this thing in advance? And if the answer is yes, which it's not, but if the answer was yes, who would? Which of these teams would? You think Wichita State? Yeah, I, again, I would put the chances at under 10%, honestly. But this is an Oklahoma team. We saw this two or three years ago in the Norman Regional. They went out there, fooled around, did not pitch very well, lost, and then were down basically to they had to rally, come from behind to beat Tulsa in an elimination game to even make it out of the regional. Now that Oklahoma team went on to win a national championship, uh, that's not really a, a well-remembered thing, but like it's happened before, and I, I think it'll have to be Wichita State. Texas A&M, they're a fine softball team, John. They don't have the power or the pitching to shut down the Sooners twice. They, they just don't. Wichita State has that formula that if Shannon Sale... If G. Juarez, if Nicole May pitches like she did at Georgia, which we haven't really seen other than that instance, 
where they're issuing a lot of free passes, and you're going to have to have the formula that OSU used on that Friday game when they won. OSU did not necessarily hit the doors off, but every time there was a runner on base, it felt like they brought that runner home. It was the clutch hitting that got the Cowgirls ahead for that 6-4 victory. It's going to have to be a similar formula. Bailey Lang's going to have to go out there and pitch the two best games of her career to beat the Sooners twice, and she's going to have to get a lot of run support on timely hitting from the Shockers. Other than that, I just don't see where it is, but, uh, and we can have a really interesting discussion about the super regional next weekend. Uh, when we get, when we cross that bridge because of seeding things, but as far as the regional, I just don't see where the Sooners don't come out on top. I don't see where they don't come out on top in coast. Cause again, they've already run ruled the Shockers once this year. Got some football coming up in just a second. So psst, hang tight, but first, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that super regional preview right now, Ryan. A lot of people have their attention focused on next week, right? I, I don't want to say Patty Gasso does because, uh, listen, Patty knows what she's doing, but she kind of went off yesterday about the disrespect toward the Pac-12. That includes having Washington coming to Norman for the super regional next week, um, as well as just the overall conference. You know, it, it, I, let me back up. If both teams advance, if both teams advance, we got to get to that point. Like you said, cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, but all I've heard this week from Sooner fans that are trying to be a little cautious about moving too far forward and getting to Oklahoma City is Gabby Plain, the Washington pitcher, and how she's going to throw three straight games if she has to, Ryan. Yeah, this is a team that it's frankly baffling that they were not a top eight seed, much less 16 in the country. And Patty Gasso said this because Washington is a team that's been in – Yo-yoing between top 10, top five, depending on, you know, what series they've played in the coaches poll. And so Patty Gasso's frustration is if this is what the coaches are saying all year long, if, if the coaches are minting the Huskies as one of the top five, top 10 best teams in the country somewhere in there, what is the committee going to do who's not playing these teams week in, week out to, to seed them at 16, Oklahoma State? Got the fives. Like, it's one of those things that the Big 12 benefited from this. Texas is the 12 seed. I don't know how, but uh, th all these things happen. So you're going to get a fired up Washington team coming in. You're going to get a Gabby Plain who's going to want to say, who better than me? I can go in, go head to head with a fellow player of the year finalist and Jocelyn Allo. And if we shut up that Oklahoma offense two of three times, I'm going to fire my team to the College World Series. I'm going to be the national, uh, the, the USA Softball Player of the Year. So it's absolutely going to be a big time matchup. I hope that that's what we get. Um, they're going to have to go through Michigan, who is another team that I don't know how they got that top 16 seed. So it'll be interesting for Washington, but you're going to get a team that's every bit as fired up, every bit as motivated with the pitching to do it. It's going to be a fascinating matchup if the Sooners and the Huskies is what we get. But, John, I would say here's going to be the difference. You talked about that fervent Oklahoma fan base. We've talked about in years past at the Women's College World Series. This is why the Pac-12 and SEC are trying to pull that out of Oklahoma City. That's why the Hall of Fame built that huge renovation so that they'd have the Women's College World Series through 2035. The home field advantage in Norman is something else. It's something else in OKC too. That is probably what will be that extra lift the Sooners need to punch their ticket back to Oklahoma City when we all cross that bridge. It's a conspiracy. I'm telling you. Okay, Ryan, uh, I teased it, so I got to pay it off. Yesterday, I wrote maybe the most important story I've written since I've been with SI Sooners, and that is a commemoration of the 10th anniversary of Austin Box's death. If you want to read that story, it's at allsooners.com. Highly recommend it. Um, you know, I promise you. I, I interviewed both his mom and his dad about Austin and his legacy, um, it, but here's the deal. If you or someone you love can learn something important from it, please read it because it's it's an important story. It's about uh, opioid addiction. So, you know, Austin Box, let's recount the story real quickly, died 10 years ago yesterday. He was a local kid for me and had played linebacker at OU, and the poor guy just had a bunch of injuries, both in high school and in college. And at the end, he was taking painkillers, um, and he took a bunch of them, like five, the coroner said, and he overdosed, died in his sleep. Um, just an unthinkable tragedy, especially being a parent myself of, of athletes, of young athletes, young kids that age. Uh, but I interviewed, like I said, both his mom and his dad, who are such wonderful people. And today, you know, 10 years later, they're still fighting the fight to get the word out there about opioid addiction. They both said there were, in Austin's case, no warning signs 
no red flags. And they said it took Austin suddenly, like literally in a matter of months, he was doing, you know, rehab and physical therapy and all that stuff. And all of a sudden he started taking these painkillers and it was months. So just tragic, heartbreaking. But the boxes have been on, you know, government appointed boards and task forces and fact finding missions. And they've testified in court against Big Pharma. It is inspiring how they continue to battle against this, what is just a really an insidious epidemic. You don't see it coming until it's already all over you. So I just want to say if you or someone you know is struggling with opioid addiction, or if you suspect someone may have a problem, don't put it off. Don't ignore it. Uh, call the Substance Abuse National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. It's 1-800-662-HELP. Up next on the SI Sooners podcast, we are going into some more football. Support for the SI Sooners podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best men's below-the-waist grooming product on the market. So stick around for a special 20% off discount code exclusive to SI Sooners listeners. Ryan, we need to remind everyone that the Lawnmower 4.0 is here. It is out. It is ready to trim your hedges or whatever else you got down there. Uh, my favorite part about the new trimmer, bro, wireless charging? Seriously? Yes. The Lawnmower 4.0's new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which helps your battery life last longer. Yeah, John, and that's not even the best part for me. I know I'm having to toss this thing in the bag on the go as we're going here, there, and everywhere. It's got a new travel setting with the on-off switch to make sure that there's no way you're accidentally running the battery all the way down while it's in your bag, and it looks good. You've got the pressed foil finish, John. Uh, that thing looks sick. I'm showing all my friends just like, hey, these are the tools I've got. What are you bringing to the table? And then, of course, you've got the functionality, too. You can now toggle the on-off light so that you can know exactly what you're doing the entire time. You've got all those new guides, John, to get the exact cut you need. I, I don't know what more there is to say except buy the Lawnmower 4.0 and buy it now. The optimized Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is waterproof so you can groom in the shower and not have to worry about making a mess on the bathroom floor, right? That's good. SI Sooners listeners get 20% off plus free shipping if you use the promo code SOON at manscaped.com with your order. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the promo code soon. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Final segment of the SI Sooners podcast. Ryan, let's start at the top um, for football. Sooner Nation has lit its torches They've sharpened their pitchforks, and they're coming after you, Ryan, because you were assigned the story today to name the top 10 running backs in OU history, and I mean, you probably might not have long to live. You, you better get your affairs in order, um, because no matter how you rank them, you're an idiot. You have no idea what you're doing. You suck, and you're 100% wrong. Yeah, I, I made sure to get with the family, put the last will and testament uh, pen and paper. But no, like, John, first off, thank you for throwing me the hardest list we'll do all off season. Really appreciate that. Welcome to SI Sooners, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is like, we were going back and forth, and I was talking to you that this list is so hard because the, the guys that you would rank 11 through 20 – in Oklahoma history at the running back spot are going to be top five guys at just about any other institution in the country, any other program in the nation. So that's why for this list, um, we actually have an honorable mention section, which is something we hadn't done in our two previous lists, the offensive line and the defensive line. I felt it was really important to, so it's really a, a 15, the, the 11 through 15 are not ranked. Um, it's just uh, the honorable mentions are important because you've got guys that what position did they actually play as it pertains to modern football you've got guys that um the historical significance of what they did on top of being a great running back all that stuff but yeah we ranked them the criteria was college career plus pro exploits so if you if you follow what i'm doing there college career plus the pros where does a Marcus Dupree land? Where does a guy like uh, Samaj P. Ryan land, who is the all-time leading rusher at Oklahoma and has struggled to get going in the NFL? It's really interesting how to weigh all of that stuff together. And so I think we got a good list. I hope we got a good list. Uh, but at John E. Hoover on Twitter, <laughs> if you're upset at uh, anything that happened. Bring it. 
Uh, also at uh, Ryan. No, radio's Ryan. Sorry. Um, Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, so uh, a couple of weeks ago you mentioned that I did the offensive line. Last week you ranked the defensive line. I thought those were tough. I really thought, like, the offensive line, like, golly, there's a bunch of great offensive line. Elite all time. And then you go to defensive line and you're like, wait a second. Wait a second. This is way too hard. (laughs) And then you go to running back. And it's literally almost impossible. I'll say this: number one is easy. You know, there's no, there's no secrets. There's no tension. There's no like, uh, ooh, you got to go to our website to see who we rank number one. No, we're not going to do that. It's Adrian Peterson, uh, unless you're like a little part of me, a little part of me, one of those old school folks that that says nobody was ever better than Marcus Dupree, which I get. I'm in agreement with. Actually, he was the best. Of all time. He's the goat of all goats. When he was running with the football at OU, nobody in the history of the game of football ever did it better. Ever on any level. Not Jim Brown, not Barry Sanders, not Herschel Walker. Marcus Dupree, number one. But when you talk about greatest running backs, you talk about college and pros, you talk about length, uh, longevity, you talk about length of the career and product productivity over the over a long period of time. It's not close. It's Adrian Peterson. It's not a debate. But like Ryan said, man, you could go through this list, number two through 15. We only did the top 10, but like he said, he averaged five, uh, threw in five honorable mentions. It's an impossible task at a school like Oklahoma. You can find those stories at allsooners.com if you want. <clears throat> if you want a little cleaner search when you, go th- when you get there, just click on the football tab and scroll down. Ryan, if you're a premium member which I think you are, and, and I may not be, because uh, I still don't have a login. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tale for another podcast. Um, it's $1 a month for the first month, and it's 5 bucks a month after that. Or you can sign up on a yearly subscription. <clears throat> then you've seen, you know, if you're a premium member, I should say, then you've seen our Spring Rewind series, which has been a lot of fun. You and I have taken turns uh, breaking, kind of breaking down how one key guy – for the 2021 season performed in the spring game. I opened up with Justin Harrington. I think last week you did Billy Bowman. Am I right? Yes. And yesterday I did Andrew Rame. Um, I, I, basically I watched every one of Andrew Rame's, whatever it was, 31, 32 snaps from the spring game. Um, Ryan, I came away with the conclusion that he will indeed, no doubt, fill Creed Humphrey's shoes at center. I'm not saying he's going to be a two-time all Big 12 lineman of the year, or two-time All-American or anything like that. But I do predict he's going to be a three-year starter, take over the job and hold it down on his own based on what I saw in the spring game. And I, I basically, in the in the story, if you go to allsooners.com, I basically categorized and took notes on every snap that he, that he had. Not just snap at center, but he played two series of guard. Um, again, premium subscribers only. So if you want that kind of content every week, allsooners.com. Ryan, you also, I thought it was cool, you wrote a, a story tracking Oklahoma's 2022 recruiting class, the latest on the guys who have committed. And there's some scary stuff going on with Luther Burden, I, I believe, the wide receiver from St. Louis who's committed to the Sooners but has said he's going to still be taking all his official visits. Uh-oh, better watch out for that. But Ryan, you also offered up kind of a who's next, who's going to commit next. And I really get the feeling that with the dead period being lifted at the end of this month, I get the feeling there's going to be a lot of guys committing here this summer. It's going to be like fast and furious for a little bit, um, starting with Lincoln Riley's big shindig, the Champion Barbecue in June. Yeah, for sure. And we can run down some of the names on the Champion Barbecue list here, John. I I was talking to you, you know, off the podcast, and it's honestly too big of a list. Like, I would have to pull it out and start reading it to you uh, if you wanted everything. But uh, talking specifically about those next couple of guys, you're seeing it. So like Austin Jordan, um, he's the the defensive back at Denton Ryan, you know, uh, high school teammates with Billy Bowman. He's come out and basically said, I have a very clear top three. It's OU, it's Texas, it's Ohio State. Then you start looking at what he's doing. Boom, boom, boom. On consecutive weekends in June, Jordan will be going to Oklahoma, Ohio State, 
Texas. Like it's it's these guys that are getting closer and closer. It's very very clear. It's easy to see starting to just string everything together. They have boom 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 every weekend in June. They're headed somewhere on an official visit, getting that rolling because this is the one part of recruiting they haven't been able to do is get on campus, talk to the coaches, all that stuff. So the the champion barbecue weekend's gonna be massive. Uh, when you just talk about guys that are already committed, your Ish Harris's, your Jaden Rose, your Kobe McKenzie, they're all gonna be there. But then when you're talking about okay, big weekend defensively, but offensively, you've got the all the linemen coming in, Taylor, Ogbo, uh, Dayton Shore, you've got Ennis, the, the big time wide receiver coming. Like it's going to be an absolutely massive weekend. I don't think that it's any doubt this is the biggest champion barbecue weekend that Lincoln Riley's ever had, and that's just makes a ton of sense when you just think about it. They haven't had any on-campus recruiting for basically a whole year. First time you can open it up is June. Why not blow the whole thing out and have everyone on? Because like you said, John, we're all fingers crossed that there's not a second spike, something like that. If something like that happens and things get shut down again, you don't want to go in saying, wow, this guy got to go to Ohio State in Texas but hasn't seen Norman. You want to be sure you get everyone in for sure in June so that you know they've had that experience going. So it's going to be a massive week, and we're going to have a ton more stuff. Like you said, basically every single week here, it's it's softball season and it's recruiting season. So be sure you're signed up for that premium content because that's where we can really start uh, unleashing all, all that info we've got. Yeah, now some of those stories are premium only stories. A lot are going to be free, but some of them are premium only that are available only to our subscribers. And I got to say, people are really jumping on board this for the subscription so far. Um, it's been impressive to watch how many people are jumping on. So check that out, allsooners.com. Find the premium content. Ryan wrote a recruiting story. I wrote a spring review story on Andrew Rame. You can sign up right there. But as I've said many times, uh, we still offer you all the same amount of free content. You're not going to miss anything. For instance, we told you guys last week about some of our other series coming up, and th these are a blast. I love these. During, you know, there's nothing going on during the summer except recruiting. Well, so we bring you some really interesting aspects, some really interesting perspectives on other topics. Yes, we're doing the historical stuff, and if you hate the historical stuff, skip ahead. I don't care, but a lot of this is a ton of fun. Ryan is recruiting or recounting each of the uh, Sooners 50 conference championships. Like I said, a ton of fun to read, catching up with how OU won the conference championship that year. Um, 50 of them leads the nation. Pretty damn impressive. Plus the 10 best players in OU history at their position. We've gotten to that one, which has also been fun. We talked about the running backs being an almost impossibly uh, an impossible list to compile. We're also doing the 10 best transfers over the last 20 years. I know, where do these come from, right? The, the back corner of my cerebellum or some crap, I don't know. But uh, the 10, 10 best transfers includes uh, four-year transfers and JUCO transfers. So I kind of lumped them together. You could separate them if you want to. I lumped them all together. This week's story was on one of my personal favorites, one of the favorite guys I got to cover, Alan Patrick. Such a unique personality. Uh, but we're also giving you every week guys who need to, you know, we're giving you stuff for the 2021 season. We're giving you stuff for this year's roster. We took care of the history part. We're also taking care of the future part. Um, so who needs to step up on this roster to have you know, this off season to have a, a big 2021 or, you know, basically they're going to be passed over. They're going to be recruited over in a lot of cases. Like this could be their last chance to become the guy that everybody thought they were when they were a recruit or when they signed because the new recruits, 2021 and 2022, those guys are on their way. So there's some guys on this roster who need to step up and need to do it now. Need to have a huge offseason. I think Saturday, last Saturday was Jaden Hazelwood. The week before it was Jaden Davis. You know, I think we're out of Jadens. So that, uh, there's no more Jadens to pick apart. But there's more coming up on that series over the summer. We've also started previewing the two deep coming out of spring practice. Um you know, where we're literally breaking down every player at every position when we started Sunday with the offensive line, because as I've said a million times, everything in football starts with the offensive line. So I've had to answer um, quite a few questions already on social media and such for the projections that I made. I'll just say this, Ryan. I think Wanye Morris is a lock to start at left tackle. I think Eric Swenson is your starter at right tackle. And I'll say this too. Those guards had better step it up because there's some real – competition behind them ryan yeah ab absolutely and that's kind of what you're looking at that was the discussion last year already was is an andrew Rame, is a chris murray coming on strong enough 
that the guards are going to get a look over toward the end of last year. So I think it only makes sense to extrapolate that out for now you've got an actual winter, off-season, spring, summer. Like That's just more and more time for your 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 depth to build and grow. Bill Beanbow's been recruiting at a higher level across the offensive line than he did when he had that historic Joe Moore winning offensive line that now has sent all five guys to the NFL. So if you give Bill Beanbow time to start grooming, 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 if you don't step out, he's going to find another dude that can come out and he's going to put his best five on the field. You can listen to the SI Sooners podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google, iHeart, or wherever you get your podcasts. We're there. Or on your Amazon-enabled device. Just say, Alexa, please play the SI Sooners podcast. Go to our website, allsooners.com, click on the player, and listen on your phone, your tablet, or your computer. Or you can always watch the video version on my YouTube channel, John Hoover Media. For Ryan Chapman, I'm John Hoover. See you guys.